Welcome to Adding Color. Adobe Illustrator CS6 provides a number of methods to help add color to your artwork. In this video, you'll discover how to enhance your artwork by using color. I'm going to start out by simply selecting File New, selecting the Print Profile, and clicking OK. I just wanted a blank artboard open. I'm also going to my Rectangle tool and I'm selecting the Star tool and just clicking and dragging to create a star. Doesn't matter how many points you have or what it looks like at this point. If your star for whatever reason is not coming out in the default colors of a white fill with a black stroke, press the letter D and that will take you back to the default colors. I want to explain a panel to you that will be very useful if you can get used to using it. Under Window, you have a panel called Appearance. I'm dragging the Appearance tab out so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm essentially undocking it from that docking area on the right. In my appearance panel, I can see that I have a one point stroke and a white fill. I can also use the appearance panel to not only track the color and stroke attributes that are applied to my selected image, but I can even change them using this appearance panel. So it makes it really easy for you to select fills and strokes and not accidentally select the fill for the stroke or the stroke for the fill. You'll see that everything in here can be activated so that I can even increase the stroke weight as well so I can see that stroke color a little bit better. You'll also see that using the appearance panel, I can go in and add special effects, like for instance, a drop shadow. And you'll see that when I click OK, a drop shadow has been added. And if I turn down this arrow, you'll see the drop shadow has only been added to the stroke and I can turn it off or on. You can do some really complex illustrations using the appearance panel. For this lesson right now, I just want you to understand that you can easily use it to track your attributes, especially color, and also to change your color attributes. Now let's say I wanna modify an existing color. I just randomly selected these colors for the strokes and the fills. If I simply press D, I go back to the defaults and you can see that's represented in the appearance panel. Other ways that I can change color are by using fill and stroke at the bottom of the tools panel. This is probably the oldest way that you can change fill and stroke. So a lot of people who have been using Illustrator for years and years and years tend to still go down to this section to change the fill and stroke, even though you can change colors in at least three or four other places at this point. Notice that if I want to change my fill down here, I can click on the fill to pull it forward, double click, and bring up a color picker. This allows me to enter custom values or simply click on a color that I like and even slide through the hues to choose a color that's not initially represented in that color pane. Once I click OK, that's been added to the fill, and if I have something selected, it's also changed the selected item. Now let's say I want to change the stroke, but I don't want to change the selected item. I want to make sure that I either click with the selection tool off that object or select deselect. And now when I go into the stroke and double click and change the color, it doesn't affect the object that I've already created, but it will affect the next object that I create. Other ways that you can change your colors are by going up to the control panel. I have that second star selected. I can select from the default swatches that are typically in a new document, both for the fill and the stroke. If I don't have the color that I want in here, I can click on the panel menu, go into new swatch, and enter the values here, provide a custom name, or leave the name based upon the values. And then next time I go back up, you can see that my color has been added to the swatches panel. I'm going to show you more about the swatches and creating custom colors in just a short bit. Before I do that, I want to show you live paint. So I'm going to go ahead, select all by pressing Control A or Command A, and then pressing the Delete or Backspace key. I'm repositioning my appearance to be off the artboard a little bit, and I'm creating an ellipse. I want this ellipse to be a circle. So I'm clicking once out of my artboard and I'm typing 5IN by 5IN. Now the reason I'm typing IN is because when I created this new document, 
I didn't set up the units to be inches. I just went at the print default. If you're working on your own document and you want to use inches, you can either type 5IN and it will convert it to the points for you, or you can go up under Edit, Preferences, Units, and change it at any time to inches. Don't change stroke and type, only general, and click OK. So what do I do if I created the shape and I actually wanted it black and white? I press the letter D. And again, that goes back to the default colors. I want to see through the circle though, so I'm clicking on the fill down in the tools panel and clicking on none. Keep in mind, I could also use the control panel for that, or I could use the appearance panel as well. I'm selecting my selection tool. I'm holding down my Alt or Option key and dragging the circle a little bit to the lower right and then dragging it again, holding down my Alt or Option key to the lower left. And what I've done is I've cloned that shape. And in the process of doing that, I have created some shapes here that I want to color separately. Now without live paint, I would have to go in and create these separate shapes and then fill them with different colors. But by taking advantage of live paint, I can easily fill in those sections. So I'm going to select this entire group of items by taking my solid selection tool and clicking and dragging a marquee around the entire group of items. I'm then holding down on my shape builder tool and selecting the live paint bucket and clicking once on this group of items. And you'll see that what happens is that I can now highlight those individual shapes by using the Live Paint Bucket tool. I'm going to go to my Swatches panel and I'm going to select to start CMYK Red. And you'll notice that if I click in any of these shapes, it fills it with that color. But yet, do you see I have the colors that are next to my red color in the Swatches panel as selectable items up above that cursor which means if I press the right arrow, I can select yellow and continue to fill in. If I press the right arrow again, I've got green. Press it a couple more times and get blue. You can use any colors that you want to fill in these shapes. I just used those primary colors that were up at the top of the swatches panel and close to each other. If I want to reposition or move these, I can go to the Live Paint Selection tool and you'll notice that I can use that tool to move these a little bit, reposition them if I need to. If I want to reselect those individual sections, I can go back at any time with the Live Paint Selection tool, which is hidden in the same tool as the Live Paint bucket. You'll see that I can select these shapes individually and make changes as well. Be careful when you do this because you can also select the stroke or the fill. I want to go into more about custom colors and I've created this little abstract shape using the live paint bucket, but I'm also going to go add some existing artwork. So I'm going under window to symbols and through the panel menu, I'm going to open a symbol library and the library I'm adding is retro. Now what symbols are just simply saved artwork. You can save anything as a symbol if you want to go back and use it again. In fact, if I just take my selection tool and take this abstract shape that I just created, I can drag and drop it right to the symbols panel, give it a name, and drag it out any time that I want to use it. If I want to go back to edit it, I would have to go under Object Expand and click OK, but then I'm left with my original artwork that I started with. I'm going to delete that. Adobe has nicely provided you with all sorts of symbols and I had you open up the retro library. Go ahead and click on the little mini bus and drag and drop it out to your artboard. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, hold your shift key down and grab the corner to constrain it as you resize it. You'll see that as a default, that this mini bus is dynamically connected back to that original symbol. But if you go under Object Expand, you can turn it back into the original paths and shapes that created it to begin with. 
So in this lesson, you discovered how to apply color and create color in Adobe Illustrator CS6.